How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the sixth and the final age and some of the emerging trends that I've seen in the direction that these worlds are taking. Now I know some of you might be disappointed that I'm not talking about the heretic world but in my opinion that world is still in its infancy and it's really too early for me to say anything intelligent about what's developing over there. In the past, with the global conflict world, I attempted to do some sort of news on the world for each week. Overall, I did not like that format. It was very stressful. Just getting the information about different houses was like trying to pull teeth because nobody really wanted to talk to me, which is fair enough because, you know, house secrets and all that. So I won't be doing any news on that world, but I will be doing like tutorials, walkthroughs, that kind of stuff like I used to do. But what I would like to talk about instead today is the prevalence of the influx of players in these older worlds that are in the 6th and 7th age, you'll see a lot of them popping up a lot more than usual. Uh, a lot of them have good intentions, they are simply here for the prizes, but they also there are ones that are here to attempt to sort of circumvent the current ruling status quo. So there are currently houses that rule the world, right? And some of these players are they're not here just for the good prizes they are also here to take the best prizes and one of the emerging uh, sort of orders that i've seen passed down from the higher ups is the suggestion or even requirement that you modify your parish so let's go into my parish once that was not my parish and i'm going to show you something so not you might notice this parish is a little empty and it could become a lot more empty, and that's because I have deleted all of the unit barracks. So there is no archer's guild or archery range, there's no pikeman's drill yard, and there is no siege engineer's guild. And there is a very good reason for this. In addition to not having any gold in your parish, having these buildings removed from your parish makes it a lot less likely that a player is going to spawn into this world as a rather low-ranked player, you know, they could only be an alderman and when they're ready to take their second village. Obviously, at that time, they cannot actually field an army in their village yet that could actually take out a fully developed village, unless, of course, they were using cards quite heavily. However, uh, what a lot of them do to equal or even the odds in these situations is they simply flip your parish over to them and then use the units in that parish. Now this is a parish I recently uh, acquired and as you can see the barracks and stuff are still in it. Well just that's interesting. I thought I saw the pikeman's drill yard here. The pikeman's drill yard is level zero. Okay but the archery's the archer's guild is built and what they'll do is they'll use those upgraded troops in that parish to attack your very own villages. For example if this parish was flipped somebody spawned into this world, flipped this parish, they would use the gold and the troops I had stored in there to attack my village, and then my village would uh, would be open, would be ripe for the taking with a decently sized army, a captain army. And that's how they can really leverage the game toward to their advantage, even though they're not the ones who spent the last four years or so developing themselves in that world. Now, a lot of you will probably just be safe by keeping all the gold out of your parishes, because if there is no gold in your parish, there is no opportunity for them to create troops aside from sending the troops from their own village, which is, like I pointed out before, really not going to be a solution because most likely their villages themselves are a bit deficient in terms of troop production, but it's always possible. And just removing that altogether entirely negates any possibility that somebody could use the parish against me. Like they could potentially raid another parish. Like let's say, for example here, this parish might not have much gold in it, but if they know of a parish right down here, let's say one of these parishes with nobody in it. Now, they might not be collecting gold anymore because there are no parishioners, but up to this point they probably were collecting gold and that gold should still be sitting in the parish, which means that they might be easily able to lift the gold load off that parish, transfer it back to the parish right next to my village, and then once again use the army in that in the parish next to my village to attack me. So, you know, the best thing that you can do if you are in a world that is in age six or the final age is go ahead and remove all the gold from your parish. Now, you can give it to your faction members, have them raid it and store it. You know, likely there will be a couple of faction members who are they're very good fighters and they'll be able to store that gold quite safely because they're quite active and they're willing to defend it. 
uh, give it to them. Otherwise, just reduce your tax, your TIV rate every turn. So that way, not every turn, every day. So that way you're giving the gold back to the parish members, which in most cases is going to be yourself and maybe one other player because these worlds, even though they are seeing a small influx of players, are still not all that active. And this will largely discourage players from raiding your parishes and from taking over your parishes because there is just not a whole lot of benefit for them to own your parishes. And I think the more widespread this message is, the less likely it is that players who don't deserve prizes in these older worlds don't get them. And what do I mean by deserve? Well, you could say that the players who have invested their time for the past four years developing themselves in these worlds are sort of the rightful victors. And even though you could make the assertion, you could make a case for saying that, well, if they are not willing to protect their own holdings, they sort of deserve to have a better faction of, or band of players come and sort of take that prize from them. And I think that is fair, which is why I'm saying uh, the more widespread this message is, the more likely it is that players in these older worlds will be able to hang on to what they have achieved thus far and not lose it to a more active and better coordinated group of highly active players who are intent upon winning the top echelon of prizes. So I think that pretty much sums it up for this video. Those are some general strategies here regarding parishes in the sixth and final ages for Strongholds Kingdoms. I hope you found it useful if you know of any other strategies that you are seeing like the leaders in these worlds start to implement that are different from the average run-of-the-mill rules. Uh, feel free to let me know if you disagree with some of my reasoning here. Uh, let me know about that as well in the comments below this video. Thank you very much for watching as always and I hope to see you next time.